Uh, hello there, my name is Ronald. I am a 3D generalist and the first thing that I will say is that uh, English is not my natural language, so sorry for that. I hope that you understand uh, maybe a 50% of what I'm saying, so uh, you can follow this tutorial. Uh, I will share the file too, so you can use this video as a uh, as a guide. Um, and and with the file, uh, I think that yeah, you you it's not really that hard, but it's a cool concept what I am introducing here. Uh, what this tutorial is about is uh, about how we can remap a value. Uh, in, in this case, a value uh, a texture value that goes from zero to one zero on black, one on white, but it is not about the texture, okay? It is about uh, remapping values. Um, you will understand what I'm saying if I go into my operator, so let's start with a tutorial. Uh, let's start with it, okay? Let's, let's check what I have. This is a, a standard particle flow setup. And what I'm having here and I'm displaying is a, just a, a map, a gradient ramp map with noise on it. Uh, and a particle flow, nothing crazy, something really, really basic. But here is the thing that I, am, I will be talking about. Okay, let's minimize this. This, okay. Uh, this is a concept right here. Okay, what is remapping? Okay, um, you can find another tutorial that deals with this uh, texture, texture uh, driving motion. So you can take a look, take, check a check about it, about it on those on those videos. Um, I will be I will be doing an overview of what I'm doing here. So I take the plane. Check the closest point by surface the particles found. Take the color of that point. Use that color to share data with the with the particle. Uh, if the particles is on the black color, is near is near a, a gray or black value, it will it will get the values. Uh, uh, close to zero, and one if it goes to a white value. Okay, that's basically it. Uh, this condition is not the so I, uh, the main thing of the system. The main thing is here. Okay, uh, right here. What what I'm doing here? Okay, uh, the values that go the output of this is, will be from zero to one. This value gets here and gets multiplied by this time scale that it is 50. Why? Why it is 50? Okay, let's let's check the graph. This graph this graph will explain everything. Okay, uh, as you can see, the first value goes in frame zero and it has a value of zero. So if the time is zero, uh, it will output a value of zero. And here is 50 just like this time scale. So when we get to the time of 50, you will get the value of 1. The last output will be 1. And after that, it will be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Just 1. Okay? Uh, what we are doing here? So we have the standard values of the texture from 0 to 1. That values go right here in the bottom as time. And those values are being remapped, remapped to this, with this curve. That is re remapping values. What is, why it is important? Well, um, you can accomplish something like I did here, maybe with the output of here on the map. You can use this output and uh, use this uh, color map. Okay and apply a curve a curve here and make make it more use more constant more, more con the contrast or something like that but uh, that curve 
will be from the from the texture, not from the particles. And many many times you will find out that uh, you have values from the particles that goes from zero to one, and you want to use a certain behavior, a special behavior of, on those values. So th this is it. You can use it. Maybe this value is not a gradient. It's not a a texture value. Maybe it is a distance, a normalized distance. What is what is what is a normalized distance? Uh, let's say that we I have a um, a point here, and I define I define a radius. Uh, this will not help. It's better we use this uh, sphere. This more. Yeah, this is better. Okay. We what we what we have here? We have the position of a node and a radius. Uh, normal, a normalized distance will, will be will be doing something like this. If I if the particle is in this radius, it will start to measure the distance from the, the pivot point to the particle, and that this distance will be I don't know. Uh, in this case, the distance is about. You can check the distance right here. Okay, let's see. The distance is uh, right here. You will take a look look at the there. The distance is 180. So that is the row distance. Okay. Uh, the normalized distance will be that value of of the distance divided by the radius by the search radius. Okay. So if I go closer, the distance will be less divided by the radius. It will be uh, uh, from around. It will be a value of, uh, between zero and one. And if I am just on the particle, okay, no distance. Uh, the value, the distance value will be zero, and zero divided by this radius will be zero. If I go until the limits of the sphere, of the search search sphere radius, uh, the distance will be 184 divided by 184. It will be one. Okay, that is a normalized distance. I hope that you understand what I'm trying to to, to, to explain. I'm not too good, but uh, you can find many many uh, uh, tutorials or because this concept is just not is not being used only on 3ds max is a uh, general concept okay that normalized distance will be linear okay if you go closer to the particle it will be closer to zero if you go far away from the particle it will be closer to one but in a linear in a linear way uh, we we want to modify the linear way with this okay with our graph what it is a linear? Uh, what it? What I'm saying with this linear thing? A linear thing, a, a linear uh, behavior will will be something like this. If I put here linear, linear, it will. This particle will behave as if everything is linear. You know. The animation will be driven by, by directly by the by the texture. But if I put maybe a, another keyframe here and I modify it, you will notice that now I can use this desired groups desired groups to drive drive the. The animation of the particles. Each particle will be will follow this this uh, curve right here. So the initial value that it is from zero to one, thanks to the texture, will be remapped to this curve. Okay. As you can see, it gets here, okay, right here, value of one, and it ends on one. Okay. Uh, if I delete this and linearize this, linearize this, 
this was the this was the the usual behavior. Okay. Until it gets to one whole value right here in the end. But now I can just add another keyframe, move it, and now we will get a value that goes beyond one right here and goes right to one again on the last. If this value is, is one, it will get this value. Okay? If the value is gray, it will get re it will get really really big, as you can see. Okay? Gray values really really big. White values goes to one again. Okay? I am remapping this. I can do anything with this. I can maybe add another keyframe here. Move it. Sorry for that. Move it. Uh, and now it, it will be clamped it will be on the first on the on the values that are more maybe these values will get zero zero scale and then in the more in the gray values that, that are close to white it will be get it will get big so I am doing anything to this animation anything that I want the behavior to be I will get with this curve okay that is a concept the concept of remapping values that usually goes from 0 to 1 to another uh, curve or to have uh, more control on the behavior of the particles from an input from a linear, a linear input okay that is a concept so what is that what is what is the setup for this? Okay. What I what I did. <coughs> Sorry for that. <coughs> what I did. What I did is right here. I have a value from zero to one, and I multiply it by that value. But the value, the maximum uh, frame value that will get the curve. Okay. In in this case, 50. If I put here 100, I will want to multiply here by 100. So this value will get. 0 to 1 multiplied by by 100 will be 0 to 100 okay and now this will behave in the same way the values that are driving this animation are the are the texture values remap it with this and then it outputs the the scale okay uh, uh, I multiply those values, the 0 to 1 condition, the time scale that it is the maximum, the maximum value, uh, the maximum frame value on the graph, and I convert this value to time with this with a convert sub operator right here, real to time, okay, real to time, frame mass. So each value of 1.0 of real real value will be treated as one frame, and that time input will be the driver of this node. This is just a scalar node that I put here in the parameter parameters animation thing. I put a time data input uh, here a float value, and I show it in, in the track view right here, right here. I I don't like this this thing. I will use the classic. I don't know. I like it. I really, I really like it, the classic one. So uh, we can use maybe uh, animated values, uh, animated values. Okay, build source. Okay, we show our new our new graph value the scalar value right here here is a float value uh, you 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 have to be careful because here we have an, a, a lot of values you can you I'll use a float value uh, that's the standard for me because uh, this value is not uh, dependent of the units of the of the 3ds max system is it's a number just a number and a number with no dimensions okay so what that's why I use a float value 
uh, I, I created this, this thing and I created a, a graph right here added a few po uh, two points mm, this point make it the maximum value of my time scale that will be 100 and the maximum value that it will output on the last frame that will that that will be one and here I put it a frame of zero the minimum value is zero and use this to look take a look a better look at it and here I can add another the modifiers of the remapping the remapping of this curve you know as you saw okay this is what right here the graph this will be drive uh, the, the remapped values of, of this I multiply I multiply it by uh, another value that is the maximum scale uh, it's, it is just a multiplier if I this multi this, this value multiply a, a, any value that the graph is outputting the graph in this case outs, outputs a value uh, is not just from 0 to 1 because as you can see if I show up this value is more than 1 is 1 0.24 but the last value the last value will be will be 1 so if I want to the last value of the of the scale to be in, I don't know maybe the double I can uh, I can multiply this by 2 and now I have bigger things okay uh, that's a whole function of this multi of this multiplier uh, this value is then uh, op output to the scale average so I scale in, on the three on the three uh, axis the the particle okay uh, and that's all the the really cool thing is right here uh, you I, I maybe you can you think that this is not something really really cool not nothing really great because okay you, you can drive uh, this with di directly with the uh, with the texture but it will be less flexible you know the animation will be driven only by that and in a, in a, and in a linear way maybe with the texture you have the option of the output of the map <coughs> but as I said, if you introduce another concept like the normalized distance or maybe a normal, normalized age, uh, if you use a normalized age before, you know that it is the lifespan of a particle, of, uh, I mean the particle age of the particle divided by the lifespan. So it is normalized, it's, it's a value that, go, that goes from 0 to 1. And you can, you can modify that, that, that uh, linear uh, value with this uh, with this approach and the cool thing is that it, it it behaves correctly if you change the integration steps so if i put here frame you'll see that it changed a little because the calculations are not the same but nothing really big change sometimes if you change the integration step the behavior the behavior of the particles are uh, tremendously different but in this in this case it is not okay it behaves as as you want you can change this uh, integration step and it will behave uh, uh, what is that the word uh, consistent yeah the system is consistent about time and that's all that's the concept uh, I will share with you I, I will make you take a look at my uh, a complex system but the of in this complex system, the heart of this complex system, it is the the the, the thing that I just show you. I just show you. Okay, take a look at this. I have this, and the teapot reforms from this. Okay, and here I have particle view, and I can change. Uh, and right now I'm getting the last positions from from this from this plane, but I can get the the, the offset position from the normal of the of the teapot. And here you have the concept of normalized distance. This this uh, this effector uh, sh uh, take a look at how far is the particle from it, and if the particle is in certain distance, it outputs a value that goes from zero to one. And that value that goes from zero to one, it is being used by, by 
our data operator to drive the, the animation of the particles. Okay? It's a formation. I can change uh, uh, this teapot for another object. It is just an exploded teapot with shell of, with a shell modifier on it. But I will. Uh, we can take a look at the system right here. Okay, this is the heart. Okay, as you can see, I'm driving everything with this. This is the effect of or the condition that goes from zero to one. This can be maybe uh, the texture. Okay, that goes from zero to one. This thing goes also from zero to one. Uh, I can put here a texture and make it at the input of this and it will behave as you saw in the other video. Uh, this is more complex stuff, but all of this is be, it's been dried by this. Okay? And we have curves and I have curves for curves for everything. Sorry for my English. Really really sorry. I have curves curves for everything. I have curves curves right here. So animated Okay, let's take a look at our okay po our position our position curves. I have a curve for every single uh, every single every single axis. Okay, so I have a curve for the x axis, the y axis, the c axis, and the curve. maybe I can take. I don't know if how, okay here. As you can see, the scale is being is being pushed to three and then and then it falls to one again. This is what is happening in, in the C axis of the of, of the particle. And I can maybe put another point here and modify it. Maybe it, it makes a certain overshot. You can Use it if you want. I have variation that that modify the the, the the behavior, but the heart of this system, or the reason that it of how it it got created is it uh, it is this it, it, it is this remapped values. Okay. Uh, another example will be something like this. That is a recreation of a of a of a really useful tutorial that I found on Vimeo. Uh, wait a second, what is here? Here, okay. This thing, okay. This thing again, it is driven in a way that right here. Again, we have the condition that go from zero to one. In this case, it's an animated condition. It's a value that goes that it is animated from zero to one in a certain amount of, of frames. Okay, I can change these frames. Maybe I can put it 25 here, and the, and the animation will be from zero to 25. But the behavior of the animation in 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 that interval will be driven driven by this. Again, a curve, okay? A curve that I can uh, change. Maybe I can put another in another value here, and the value will be will be beyond one. And this is driving a lot of things that goes to do this thing, okay? But the heart of the animation will be the remapped values. Uh, the thing that I share with you is how you can do something like this. I, I uh, this is a recreation of the tutorial because on the tutorial that, that I will share with you, or you can check the website. Uh, he have here a tutorial on data operators that are really really useful. Um, and that's a page. Okay, Kai Cadding, give me a page uh, here here. He created something like what I'm showing you. Show you on, on the on the on my file. It is his concept, okay. Uh, but he used uh, an approach that is uh, driven by the position, the position of 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 the particles. 
I use an approach that uh, in that, that I use the speed vector, okay? So I can have an animation some like this, and use a spawn for create create particles on the travel of the particles. So uh, it recreates the the position the it recreates the form of these position values. These static position values and, uh, are animated right here, thanks to the speed values. Okay, so I can drive this here and make that shape change. Okay, and you can animate something like that. Okay, that's all. Uh, uh, I will share uh, more of. I will make more tutorials so I can share with you some maybe this concept and. The next thing that I will talk about will be how I created this small graph teapot. Okay, uh, this this thing that that you can use for uh, in a, the more cool cool ways. If I put it here, uh, uh, here normal set. Okay, so I will share with you how you can you can uh, animate particles from the normals. Okay. As you can see, I'm using the normals of each element to as an offset, and it goes uh, to the to its origin. Ori to oh, that, sorry, sorry for my really really bad English. Uh, it goes to the start position. I can say that maybe the init position as I as I put it here. It goes from an offset to an init, an init position. <clears throat> uh, uh, but but let's let don't uh, don't want to I don't want to confuse you with this uh, uh, because uh, I will talk about this system in another tutorial. But uh, I want you to know that that here the heart of this 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 thing is again the remapped values remapped values here. Okay. Uh, it, I can use another integration step, maybe a, a quarter of integration step, and this will behave consistent. It will be the same thing, okay? And, it, and that is really, really cool. Uh, that's all. Uh, I will share the file. I hope that you understand what I what I was saying. <laughs> Sorry for my bad English. Uh, this is my first tutorial too, so don't don't be too too harsh with me. Uh, and that's all. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.